What's up, guys? So, so um, this is part three. If you haven't watched part one or two, part two, watch them. I'm talking about the New Year's Eve videos. I'm calling them New Year's Eve part one, New Year's Eve part two, New Year's Eve part three. Um, watch these videos, so because if you just watch this one, you might not really understand where I'm coming from. Because like I'm gonna, it's like I'm continuing on something I was talking about. And just in case your first video of you watching on me, uh, I'm 25 years old, 100% sober. Uh, in, Ju in July 2012, I'll be five years sober, and uh, tonight is New Year's Eve 2011, and tonight at 11.59 p.m., 59 seconds, I will be seven years with no cigarettes. Okay, cool. Now let me get back into what I was saying. Okay. Um, for all you guys out there, um, the easiest thing to do is drugs. The easiest thing to do is to smoke for all those people who have already been introduced to it, exposed to it, and started, and blah, blah, blah. The easiest thing to do is to continue doing that. Once you start smoking cigarettes, what's the easiest thing to do? To keep smoking cigarettes, right? What's the hardest thing you could think of to do as a cigarette smoker? To quit, right? My friend, today actually, I was driving and I was like, hey, I'll buy you some, some nicotine patches right now. Do you want them? And we were talking about it and he said, yeah, yeah, yeah I want to quit, I want to quit. I was like, dude, it's New Year's Eve. I'll buy some, some nicotine patches. You know, uh, I mean, before, you know, like weeks ago, he said he'll do it. And then today we're near a drugstore and I was like, I'll buy some right now. He started panicking. He started shaking. His, he's like, what? What? I, I'm, not, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And I was just going to turn. Around. He's like, no, what are you doing? I'm not ready. And I flipped the U-turn. I, like, I was like, okay, man, I won't go then. And we just went back around. He's like, he's like, look at me, man. My hands are shaking. He's like, I really, I was like, I'm really addicted. And, he, and anyway, and he's not the type to ever admit about addictions. But anyway, so the hardest thing to do as a cigarette smoker is to quit, right? And the hardest thing to do as a pothead is to stop smoking weed. Um, and people always want to defend what they do. It's very rare when you'll meet someone that is messing up and then will admit it. Like, dang, I'm smoking weed right now, but I really shouldn't be, you know? I really ought to quit, but for now, I am just messing up, you know? They will just defend what they do to the max. They don't even realize they're doing it. It's sort of like a self-defense mechanism. If someone slaps you in your face, you're not going to let them slap you in the face. You're going to keep moving. Your, you're going to try and block it. And maybe even try and counter punch, you know what I mean? So when I am like sort of attacking you by saying, hey man, you're wrong by smoking weed, or that you could be doing better for yourself, you could you should quit because it is better and you just don't know what you're missing out on. It's it's nature for you to defend yourself, to defend every decision you've ever made, and defend defend all those decisions that you made that led you to be this potted that you are. It's just nature. And I and I don't I I expect most people to be like that. The harder thing to do, which is what I do, is I admit my mistakes. And if you got, and that's the better person, in my opinion, of two people. If someone's if someone's defending a a, a, a mistake that they made and proud of it, and then the other guy is admitting his mistake and regrets it, it's this guy right here, the guy that admits his mistake and regrets his mistake. <laughs> It's that guy that, that I'm more like that I look up to. It's this other guy that I think of as like childish mentality, but it's not his fault. Maybe he's just not ready or whatever. Or, you know, he probably doesn't even realize he's doing it. But like, uh, for instance, if I made a mistake, I'd be like, yeah, I am so sorry. I did not mean to do that. I apologize. Totally my fault. To most people, they're like, oh, this guy sobbed, you know? And then the other way to go about it would be like, I never made a mistake in my life, or like, I'm totally, what, like, why, why would I be sorry about that, you know what I mean, um, don't, don't feel bad, don't, don't, um, blah, 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 like, just about everybody I know is like that, they're proud of every decision they've ever made in the book, they do not, they will literally say, I don't regret any decision I've ever made, yeah, so you're proud of everything you've ever said and done, yeah, right, I can think of millions of things that I've said and done that I regret. In fact, I almost regret my entire age of 17. Almost the entire thing. I didn't do a, a thing that was good. In fact, this is a mentality I would have even when I was doing drugs. Like, I would uh, I would like talk, like say to myself, and by drugs I mean weed, alcohol, and cigarettes. I would say to myself, I am not doing anything good for anybody or anyone, not even myself. I am just fact hurting things like I'm causing problems I am responsible for a lot of people that smoke weed right now because I got a lot of them I started and some of them do worse drugs now and I'm responsible for that but even if I didn't start any of that I'm just and I am not doing anything good for anybody for anyone at the time I was younger too so I wasn't really working or, or maybe I was whatever it doesn't matter but here I am just a drunk person walking around here I am just a drunk driver or here I am just a 
just a bad influence in this society. You know, here I am just polluting the air. I'm not doing anything good. That's why I hated cops. Everybody that's a criminal hates cops. But if you've got, if you're not doing anything wrong, then you don't even care. You know what I mean? I like cops now. You know what I mean? One time I got so scared. I thought somebody was outside. It was late at night at work. I called the police. I felt so darn good when three police officers showed up proactively, productively, like enthusiastically with their flashlights looking all over the parking lot and just some complete strangers, totally, totally stoked, totally excited about helping me. You know what I mean? Not even any of my friends would do anything like that. Hey man, there's someone outside. I don't know, man. That's far, dude. Later. You know what I mean? And here goes some strangers. So I love cops. You know what I mean? Why would I hate them? Um, but anyway, dang, I got ADD. I'm just like all over the place. Anyway, so check it. Um, so it would be nice if you would admit that you are wrong and then you can, and then you can quit. Like if you keep telling yourself that nothing's broken, then you can never fix anything. You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with me. Then I don't expect you to ever get better at anything. Um, there's a friend of mine who is exactly the same and has all and has been like like five years ago when I, you know, when I was still smoking. He's exactly the same now as he was then. In fact, things are a little worse. You know what I mean? Um, I went over there not that long ago. I felt so darn depressed just looking at the whole setup. You know? And um, I was just like, gosh, shaking my head, I'm like, man, this guy. I feel bad for him. It's like he just doesn't care. Anyway. And he's he's one of those guys that just does not admit mistakes. He thinks he's proud of everything he's ever done and everything he's doing now. And he doesn't want to admit that he's wrong. So how is he ever going to get better? If you already think you're the best and you're doing your best, how are you ever going to get, you know, as time goes on, how, like, time's going to go on, but you're going to stay the same or just decrease. You know, how are you ever going to get better and better? Like, and then by better and better, you put that in your own, translate that into your own thing. Like, better at what? I don't know, better, like, just advance in life, you know, get married and start a family or, or, or financially move up or whatever it is, you know, just anything. How are you ever going to do anything better or, or, or just grow in a good way if you're already doing your best? You know what I mean? There's nothing, you don't even have to do anything. You just stay, stay put, just keep doing everything the same. You know, then, then you'll, you know, and that's what you'll do. And the end result's gonna, you're not gonna like it. And, or people will not like it, you know? Whatever. Um, like, if you don't change anything, then nothing's gonna change. Like, think about the last X amount of time of your life. Was it, was it really fun and exciting? Or, you know, was it like, was it productive or proactive in any way? Like, did you, was there a big difference now? Is there a big difference in a good way now to five years ago or two years ago, whatever? Like, did you make a lot of progress? When I was smoking weed, when I was doing drugs, the, the day, let's say, say I started when I was 15 and then, uh, and, then, and then like say five years later, I'm 20, I'm still doing the same stuff. You would think that things should be in five years time, I had enough time to get things much better to, to advance. Like say we're playing a, a game like Diablo. I'd be, you know, in five years, I would go from like level, like level 12 to like level 92 Amazon. You know what I mean? Like, or if it's like Warcraft, I've never played the game, but I know that as time goes on, you get more like levels. And then the more levels you are, the more like leveled up you are. You're just a better, stronger, like more advanced person, you know, from the age 15 to age of 20, let's say, let's say when I was 15, I was like a level three or say I was like a level 20. And then you would think that in five years, I would, I would be like a level 100, 117. Like I would be just like five years more like experience. No, man, if you really want to put a number on it, I wasn't even as good as I was when I was 15. So in five years time, not only did nothing get better, but things got worse. So now I'm like a level 12 and I was a 20 five years ago. Do you know what I'm saying? But in five years, damn, I could have been, excuse my language, I could have been a, a level 127, man, and that's if I was coasting. And if I was trying, I could have been a level 227. You know what I mean? Time is a wasting, you know what I mean? And no one was not proud of those last five years, you know? But dang, every once in a while, I pinch, my, I pinch myself every day. I cannot believe, I cannot believe the changes that, that, that have taken place since I quit, since I quit doing drugs. 
I drop on my knees and thank God randomly all the time. All the time. I just can't believe it. It's like a dream or something. It just seems so unreal. Like when I think about how different things are now compared to five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. I just, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. I mean, I don't want to start telling you specifically stuff that's different for me now. I mean, it would take, I would, it would take me 10 videos plus, you know what I mean? And everyone's different. But dang, and then things just keep, and then it's, it doesn't stop. It's better and better. Um, this life, this life is way better than the high life, okay? I don't do any drugs. I don't need anything. The only thing I need is food, sleep, water. I think that's it. Of course, God. <laughs> but that's really the, the only physical things that I need. But for those people out there that still do drugs, they customize their body to need other things, cigarettes weed, alcohol, and if they don't have them, it's like, it's like not having food, it's like not having water, it's, not, it's like not having sleep, They're, they, they gotta have it, and it, it sucks to live like that, man, not only, that's just one of the many reasons that doing drugs suck, like, that is not even, like, of all, like, that's like a level one of, of ten, as far as the, as far as how much it sucks, that's like nothing compared to all the other ways that it sucks to live like that. I would not make, I would not make 27, 10 minute plus long videos about how much better it is over here if it wasn't better over here. If it wasn't even, I would not waste my time reaching out to you and people would not be emailing me. I, it, people would not, I, I probably have like over a hundred emails by now from people saying, thank you so much. I did what you said. You know, I'm three months sober now. I am, I'm on month one. I'm on month three. I'm on week two, I, whatever. And dang, you were right. Yeah, that first week was tough. Yeah, it was hard to sleep or whatever. You know, like, yeah, I had some crazy dreams in the beginning. But man, and I stuck with it like you said. But man, were you right. I ain't never going back. I never want to smoke weed ever again for the rest of my life, just like you. I know what you're talking about. And yeah, we do sound crazy because now they're talking like that. And now they're telling people, you know what I mean? And they're like, yeah, I know. I know what you mean now. No one's ever quit. So like we sound crazy and I expect me to sound crazy because I'm a try hard person. I've done things that I take steps that people don't want to take. I do things the harder way. You know what I mean? And, and it's worth it. It's worth it. Don't cheat yourself. Don't don't be the TV dinner guy. Be the guy that freaking cooks his food. Steam vegetables, steam broccoli, cauliflower. That'll make you strong. Okay? I mean, take the steps that you need to take to get here. There's only one there's only one way to get here, man, and you got to take that way. There's no cheat. There's no nicotine patches for weed. You know what I mean? There is no plane ride from here to paradise. You got to you got to take got to put in that work, man. You got to do it. And you can never rule out. You can never decide, yeah, I considered it, but I decided not to. You can't do that, man. You can't. How can you How can you decide that this paradise is not for you? You've never been here. You know what I mean? How can you say that this place isn't as good as that place when you've never been here? For all those people that bash what I say, and they better tell the truth. Like, like I mean... Like, be honest with yourself. Yeah, you've been smoking weed since you were 15, now you're 25. You haven't really been sober since you started. How the heck are you going to know what it's like over here? You cannot say that it's better over there than it is over here. And when you wake up in the morning, you're not sober, man. You got to stay off it for three months to feel what I'm talking about. It is better over here. Factual, not opinion. It is better over here. And if you come over here and you actually take those steps and you get here and you decide that you don't like it, you are probably seriously, like mentally depressed. And I'm not bashing you. If all, like that's probably such a rare case that no one that's watched this video would ever feel that way. I can almost guarantee that if you take the steps it takes to get here, you will not go back. You will not want to go back. You will stay here. You will phone up everyone you know, tell them about this place. Say, you got to get here. You'll show them the directions. You'll say, hey, man, this is how you get here. -la 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 -la. I'm not coming back. So if you want to see me, you better come over here and meet me here. You know what I mean? Whatever. 
you can't stop, you can't shut up about this place once you get here. And that's how it feels. You know what I mean? How, like, how can you want to keep this place a secret? You know what I mean? You don't know what you're missing out on. I know I'm not missing out on anything over there because it's better over here. There's not something that a pothead experiences or that an alcoholic experiences or that a cigarette smoker experiences or any other drug user experiences that I am missing. They're missing out on life. I am not. I am living life, dude. I am in reality. I am not high. I am not living in my head. I am living here on this planet in this earth. I am freaking... I am leveling up, bro. I am freaking leveling up, and you're not. You're leveling down. You're not even making progress. You're staying the same, but slowly going down, man. Slowly going down. And I'm going upwards, brother. And I'm. And that's not why I quit, so that I can get better and look better at stuff. You know, oh, like look at this fool. Look at what he has. No, that is not why I quit, man. Everyone's born with sobriety. You put yourself in this situation somehow. It might be the environment that you grew up in. For me, it was. My next door neighbor smoked weed and my other next door neighbor smoked cigarettes. They are physically in my face every single day. We are the exact same age. We go to the same school, blah, blah, blah. You know, because of my environment, that's how I got into it. That's my excuse, you know what I mean? In a way, I didn't really have a chance, you know what I mean? Like, unless, my, unless for some strange reason I didn't talk to them, I don't really know. I'm not saying it's all your freaking fault and you should hate yourself, you know what I mean? For most people that are bad, people are doing wrong things, it's usually a, they're a product of their environment. And even the good people that do good things, they're a product of their environment. You know what I mean? If you grow up in a nice, really nice area and like, uh, you, you, and everyone, you know, blah, 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 you might have better opportunities than those of us that grew up in the freaking rougher areas. You know what I mean? I mean, you, we might, you might find a 12 year old boy in a bad neighborhood and he's all cussing and he's all smoking weed and smoking cigarettes and blah, 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 blah. He gets to go home whenever he wants to. You might find the same exact kid, say he had a twin brother, but he grew up in another neighborhood, a nicer neighborhood, probably never said, probably never cusses, never tried anything, won't try anything, he's all totally stoked about school, you know what I mean? Like he's gonna go home and do his homework and he has to be home by a certain time, you know what I mean? It's our environment, that's my opinion. But now that you know better, you can change stuff, you know what I mean? Knowing that you don't know is the beginning of knowing. That's what my guitar teacher told me once. Knowing that you don't know is the beginning of knowing. So now that you know, you have no excuse, okay? Yeah, maybe like because of certain chain of events, blah, 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 that you couldn't control, you were led to this place that you're in now that you smoke weed all day long, every 30 minutes, you freaking chain smoke cigarettes and you drink all the time and yeah, like, and it sucks and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and maybe, you know, whatever. But now that you know, man, you have no excuse. And now that I told you about a better place and that it's free to get there, all you gotta do is try, it will be your fault if you don't wind up here. Because you know how to get here. You know that this place exists. You know it doesn't cost any money to get here. In fact, it's cheaper to get here than it is to live where you're at. You know what I mean? Freaking five bucks here, 10 bucks there. Let me buy a, let me get a freaking dub. Let me go buy a pack of cigarettes. Let's go to the corner and get some 30s, some 32 ounces. That is freaking costing money. It's free to get where I'm at, man. It's way cheaper. And um, and if you don't get here, that's your fault, man. I'm telling you that it's much better over here. And you cannot decide. You don't want to come here until you come here and decide that it's not for you. But I can guarantee you, man, I could put money on it. I would put my whole bank account and everything that I've got on this bet that if you freaking came over here, you would love it. And if you had my phone number, you would call me and you would tell me, damn. I am so glad I came here. Thank you so much, man. You were right. You were right. You would wake me up in the middle of the night and tell me how right I was. You know what I mean? And you will, if you knew, if you could see like a video clip of what it would be like if you were to travel here and see what it would be like a year from now after you got here, if you would see a video clip of what your life would be like, you would be like, what the heck do I need to do to be there in a year? What do I need to do for, for that to be my life? That's what I want. That's what I want. You know what I mean? And if you could see a video clip of what it, and you could compare the two, see a video clip of what life would be like if you never chose to come here, come and, 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 and see see a year's time in, in both video, both hands. Okay, life sucks over here. It looks exactly the same, but worse. And then over here, oh my gosh, what the heck is that? Is that a wife and kids? Is, is, that, is, that, a, is that a career? Like, what the heck's going on? I want this. How do I get here? I challenge you to come here. I can guarantee that you will not regret coming here. I hope you come here, okay? God bless you all and
I'll reply to these emails as soon as I can. All right, you guys, take it easy. I'm so sorry that I haven't logged on in a while. I know I have a lot of emails here, and a lot of them are subject. Week number three, month number two, still staying strong, all kinds of stuff like that. I already know what those emails are about. If you're sober, please do, do everybody a favor and start writing in the comments that you're sober and that you like it so people know that I'm not crazy, it's not just me. The, out of 100 people, out of 1,000 potheads, maybe one will eventually quit. That's how addicting pot is. That's how freaking addicting smoking weed is. It's hard to quit. It's really hard to quit. Yeah, it's not physically addicting. It's mentally addicting. However it's addicting, it's addicting. And if you go back to it every day, how can you, not, how can you say it's not addicting? I remember, all, I remember uh, I watched a, um, put it this way. There was this thing on TV. This kid pulls out a, a, some weed and he says, hey, you wanna smoke weed? And someone says, no, I heard it's addicting. And this kid goes, it's not addicting. My brother smokes it every day and he's not addicted. And everyone laughs. You know why? Because he smokes it every day and he's not addicted. You're not a scientist. If, if all the scientists lied and told you that it was addicting, it would be totally consistent with the way things really are. Okay, then that explains why I can't stop smoking weed then. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need to, like, hear a scientist tell you this. You know what I mean? It is just from, you know from experience that it's freaking addicting, okay? And regardless whether it's addicting or not, you smoke it every day, and you shouldn't. You should stop, and you should want to stop. And you should think of yourself, I'm kind of a freak. Like, well, everybody else just drinks water and inhales oxygen and eats food and sleeps. Here I am like a freaking monster inhaling smoke and I need it just to feel normal like they do. Like, we both live the same lives, only I need to get high just to feel satisfied. Like, as if it's an itch you gotta scratch. Dang, my back itches, bro. My back itches, what am I gonna do? You know what I mean? Like. That's what it is to like to, to be a pot it. It's like you got an itch you want to scratch. I can guarantee you, just don't scratch it. That itch will go away. Just you it's gonna get so bad that you need to scratch it. You know what I mean? Like suppose it's like a little rash. Just don't just leave it alone, put a band-aid on it, and it'll freaking go away. But if you keep messing with it, it'll get really worse to the point where it scratch it itches all the time, you know what I mean? Like and you need like you need to really like focus just to not scratch it. Woo! Anyway, I'm gonna get back to what I was doing. And uh That'd be hilarious if this video stopped a long time ago and I've just been talking to myself. But anyway, man, this place exists and I'm here now. And of all the 100 potheads that I know, I know about 100 people that smoke weed in that ballpark. Of all of them, there's less than four or five people that I know that actually quit. Okay, and a lot of them, I think all of them, were forced into sobriety. And once they got there, they did not regret it. They love where they're at. And two of them, I think, are no longer in the situation they were in that was keeping them sober. Like, you know, like, like the law was drug testing them every so often or whatever it was. But now they are sober by choice. One of them was the biggest pot I'd ever met. He would, he would enthusiastically talk about weed and brag that he would never quit, right? And he was forced to quit one time, like one day, for whatever reason it was. And now he's not, no longer, no one's forcing him to be sober, but he chooses to be sober. And in my head, I was like, this guy is never going to quit back in the day when we used to blaze. I was like, this guy is going to smoke weed for the rest of his life. You know what I mean? With an attitude like that. But he was forced into sobriety, kicking and screaming, didn't want to come. He got here, he was like, dang, this place is tight. How, like, I would be an idiot to leave this place and to go back there. Like, imagine, imagine if someone gave you a mansion and then you're just, like, set. You know what I mean? Imagine you had a, a free mansion, freaking money for the rest of your life. You never have to worry about food. Uh, everything you could ever want is there. Would you give all, would you, like, just leave that place and go walk over to the ghetto and just kind of, like, struggle to barely get by? Heck no, man. You would take advantage of that free mansion, right? You would live there and you would, like, you would eat that the best food you could possibly eat. And you would like live in luxury and abundance. I'm not saying like, hey, would you choose to be flashy if you could? Replace that mansion with whatever you consider like set. You know what I mean? But you would not leave a better place for a worse place. And that's where you're at now. You're in the worst place you could be, or you're in, the worst place you could be probably be heroin, 
but you're not in the best place you could be. There is a best place, and you're not at your best. You're not doing your best. You're not in your best. You're not, you're not in the best place unless you're sober. If you're sober, then you're in the best place you could possibly be. Okay, and, I'm not, and yeah, if you're sober, you're in the best place you could possibly be. If you're, if you're not sober, you don't know what you're missing out on. You're dumbing yourself down. You're not living to your full potential. You're not living even halfway to your potential. And you'll never know what I'm talking about unless you get here. And when you do get here, even if you're the most closed-minded person, you totally disagree with everything that I'm saying. If you ever made your way here, say someone forced you, or say say someone gave you like a million bucks to try to try it out, you know what I mean? You would you would totally freaking agree with everything I just said. You'd be like, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy's freaking telling the truth, man. Dang, I was totally freaking wrong. Man, did I comment on some of those videos and say you're freaking stupid, didn't know what you're talking about, you should shut up and delete all your videos and kill yourself or whatever. Freaking <laughs> crazy things you guys say. You would freaking go, wow, was I wrong. Dang, is it tight here. Man, am I never going back. This place, oh, let me put it this way. A lot of my friends, I've heard a lot of people, even people that are Hispanic uh, or whatever ethnic, ethnicity, they'll say stuff like, man, you ever notice that foreigners come here and they do like, like, like they, they like, they like do the best. Like they're like the best. Like, like, uh, for instance, I know a lot of Asian people that, that are, that are not from here. They're from, you know, another country. They, they have broken English. But they are business owners, successful business owners. You know what I mean? And I know a lot of Hispanics that own restaurants and can't speak one word of English. I know a, like a lot of successful people from different countries. I'm in the United States. I know a lot of successful people from different countries, right? And then my friends will event, I've heard a lot of different people say, dang, you ever notice that like foreigners like do the best or something? like?" And they're all thinking that it's like, it's like just every foreigner is just better at stuff. I'm like, no, you want to know what it is? Those are the chosen ones, man. Like, for instance, let's say let's say it's a Hispanic a Hispanic person because that's a, whatever. Just use that one for example. A Hispanic person who speaks now now speaks English, but it's kind of broken, you know. Whatever came here ten years ago, and now they freaking are like millionaires or something, right? Or they're like you know really successful, whatever it is they're doing, career wise, whatever it is. Um, that's it's not just, just all Hispanics that come here eventually do well. It's man, this guy is the chosen one of all the of all the you know thousand people in his town. He's the one guy that made it here. You know what I mean? He's the chosen one. There's like thousands of people that could have done what he did. Just I mean, just make it here, just to get here. You know what I mean? Like let's say he like let's say he came here illegally. You know what I mean? Just that alone is like a mission. That's like you gotta try. You know what I mean? You gotta do some FBI kind of stuff. I mean, it's hard to do. Some people are like yeah, I'm not gonna even bother. It's so hard to do. Like no, this guy is the chosen one. Like he's the the one in a million that made it here, you know what I mean? It's just a select few. It's not all these freaking people come over here and then just do good. There's like there's like thousands of people his age at that exact same, you know, year that didn't decide to come to America. But this guy's like, no man, there's gotta be a better life. There's gotta be a better way. You know what I mean? Life shouldn't be like this. I've got a I've got a better I've got better plans in mind than to live like this for the rest of my life. I'm going to go and I'm going to produce and I'm going to bring my whole family here. You'll see, you'll see. And in his town, he's probably everyone's like, yeah, this guy's crazy. Or dang, this guy's really enthusiastic about life or something. You know, he's a chosen one. He did all this stuff and we only get to know this guy. The only reason I even got to see this guy is because he didn't give up, man. He freaking did. He busted a mission to get here. I tried so hard to get here. You know what I mean? He freaking hopped on a train, freaking FBI stuff, got illegal fake IDs and fake FBI, you know, fake social security numbers, whatever. And like, full freaking had to figure out how, where to get that stuff, had to come up with the money to pay for that stuff. You know what I mean? Why to do all kinds of stuff to, 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 just to get here. And then when he got here, had to work for some like super like, like low rates. Yeah. Yeah. Had to work for some super low rates just to get here. And and he saved his money, saved his money, saved his money. And then he's like started a plumbing company or something. You know what I mean? Just him and his brother. You know what I mean? Freaking with a five hundred dollar truck. And then now they got like a now they got like ten trucks and like fifty employees and blah 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 blah. 
it's not just it's not just all 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 Hispanic all, like let's just say like all Mexicans or something like all Mexican people are just really successful. No, this guy was like that one in a million and from his town. He's like the one guy that year that left his town and came here. And maybe every year out of all the you know hundred thousand people in his town, every 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 two years one selected one will actually make it this far and you know and do this thing. So that's like my thing. Very, very few people make it to this place that I'm talking about, to this paradise. There's like hundreds of thousands of people here in this in this pothead thing. You know, there's like thousands and thousands of people. And then maybe every year, one person will make it to paradise. One person will make, maybe one person in, in California, maybe one person in New York, maybe one person in Texas, maybe one person in freaking Iowa, you know what I mean? Maybe one person from Canada, one person from the UK, just like every, you know, and it's very few and far between. So that's why we sound so crazy when we talk, you know what I mean? You probably never, like, we're so few, it's so hard, to, I'm a chosen one, you know what I mean? Like, you could be a chosen one. It's, it's the hard, it's hard to do, man. I have to bust some FBI missions to get here kind of thing. I have to do like, like homeboy did to get here. To get here, I have to freaking try and I have to like, I have to sacrifice. I have to go through that freaking hike. I have to go through that hard times just to get here, man. But it's worth it. And, and even though I've never been there, even though I've never seen it, I know it exists and I'm gonna freaking get there. People tell me I'm crazy for, for thinking that such a place exists and then I'm wasting my time for heading towards it. Hey man, it's worth a shot. I heard it exists, or I just I I don't I didn't even hear of it, but I didn't have anyone in my life that was sober. So I didn't know anyone that 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 um I didn't know anyone. So I had to try it all by myself, and I was just just like the off, off of instinct. I know there must be something better. I know there's a better way. I know there's a better life, and I tried anyway. I was right. I didn't even know. I didn't even know where I was heading. I didn't even know anything. You know what I mean, and and then I got here, and. So freaking A, you know? <laughs> but yeah, I wound up here and, and I do not regret it one bit. I know, not a day goes by where I see someone drinking or I see someone smoking weed or I see someone smoking a cigarette and I, f I even feel like doing it or that I even feel like I'm missing out on something. One of my employees smokes weed all the time and, um, and whenever I see him, um, you know, he, he smokes weed like right in front of me or he uh, will show weed to me and I never feel like smoking. Um, I never feel like I'm missing out on anything. And uh, whew. anyway, so I'll let you know all that stuff. Um, it would be so funny if I've been talking to myself all this time. Um, anyway, yeah, man, use that analogy, chosen ones. Don't you want to be a chosen one or would you rather be one of those villagers that, that never tried hard enough to get here? You know what I mean? Do you really want to like, in, like, you know, uh, keep buying weed and cigarettes and be whatever it is. Do you really want to like keep living like that for the rest of your life, like a freaking cockroach, just like s s needing this crap? You know what I mean? I don't. You don't. You don't really need any of that stuff. You, but you do do it every day. And um, yeah, man, I'm done. I gotta get back to work. All right, you guys. So, um, good luck to you. And I really hope that you do what it takes to get here. And oh, and if I might, oh, let, let me tell you about this guy. There's this guy, uh, I watched his videos just to, for the fun of it. Um, he's on YouTube. His name is E.T. The Hip Hop Preacher. If you just type in E.T. The Hip Hop Preacher on YouTube, you'll find it. He has, video, he has like over millions of hits on, on his videos. He's an, he's, a, he's an inspirational speaker. But he's not like anyone I've ever seen before. He talks, he's like on our level. Like if you're like a, either a younger person or you're from like a hip hop or like I don't even listen to rap, but I totally relate to this guy. In fact, I relate to him more than anyone else I've ever, any other motivational speaker I've ever related to ever. He speaks to me, he speaks to my 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 uh, generation and my, my style of whatever. Like I just totally, this guy inspires the crap out of me and I challenge you to watch any of his videos. If you click on his videos and if you have a way of looking at his most viewed ones, check those out. There's two that have like the most views, like about a million hits or something. Uh, that's the ones I started with and I just started watching. I watch them all the time while I eat lunch. I will watch a video and be totally inspired throughout the day. Like, you know what I mean? Um, you know, quitters will never know. I mean, like, like, <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking about quitting smoking weed. Th those are winners. 
But if you give up, you'll never know what I'm talking about. And if you try hard and you don't give up, it is all worth it. And I, it's not like you gotta continue to try hard for the rest of your life. You try hard for the first couple of weeks and you reap the benefits of that hard work that you put in those two weeks of hard work or whatever it was. <laughs> all right, man, hang on. And, uh, and it'll all pay off for the rest of your life, man. All right, so I gotta go. Take it easy.